Almighty and everlasting God, who didst give to all the apostles grace to believe and power to preach, grant to us who read and hear those apostles, give, the, give to us the same love of that word and of your Son, and give us that same faith. Through Jesus Christ we pray. Amen. Hymn four of number nine, which is organized around morning prayer, hymns for morning prayer. Awake, awake to love and work. The lark is in the sky. The fields are wet with diamond dew. The world's awake to cry their blessings on the Lord of life as he goes meekly by. Well, we take turn to it. Dated work on Cranmer by Charles Webb Lablas. I'm saying that right, an MA, fellow of Trinity, Cambridge, professor in East India College, it looks like. It hurts. Uh, where have I seen that before? Is that Bishop Colenso? This is published in London, 1833, and it gets a lot of play, a lot of press, a lot of mention in the literature. The preface, enlarge it. Give me a second. I'm sorry, I should have done that before I started. Okay, here we are. The chief materials this is the preface. For the biography of Archbishop Cranmer to be found in Fox and Burnett's History of the Reformation, in Strip's Life of Cranmer and in his Ecclesiastical Memorials, some additional particulars may be derived from other histories of that period, both ecclesiastical and general. <coughs> the Life of Archbishop by Gilpin is but a slight performance. <laughs> And besides, it does not possess the advantage of any reference to authorities. The recent work of Mr. Todd on the same subject is extremely valuable for its faithfulness and accuracy, as also for some important documents and letters, which it has been enriched by the indefatigable patience and industry of its author. The object of the following attempt has been to collect into a compendious narrative substance of more voluminous compilations and to present it to the British public in a manner which may enable them to estimate their obligations to the great master builder of the Protestant Church of England. There is hope that previously to the appearance of the second volume of this work, the author will have the advantage of consulting the whole of the Archbishop's writing a complete collection of which, comprising those have hitherto remained in manuscript, is now in preparation at the Clarendon Press, this 1833, before the Parker Society series. The contents, introduction. The principles of Wycliffe were pressed for time, but not extinguish persecution of Lollardism in the reign of Henry VIII, Billy, cases of Kaiser Werner and the reigns of Edward IV adverted to. And this makes us wonder how clear uh, Cranmer had any connection in Tyndale too to Lollardy. The Abbot of Wichelcombe's book on the immunities of the clergy, discussions of doctrine, declaration of Henry VIII, against ecclesiastical jurisdiction and temporal matters, the murder of Hun, views of Wolsey respecting the reformation of the clergy, his project for the abolition of the monastic system, the king's book against Luther, notice of his marriage with his brother's widow, his scruples, his application to the Pope for dissolution of his marriage, delay and chicanery, of the court of Rome, Anne Boleyn, convocation compelled to a partial recognition of the king's ecclesiastical supremacy, questions agitated respecting the power and jurisdiction of the clergy, 
general state of feeling and opinion relative to the Reformation, chapter 2, 1489 to 1531. Parentage and birth of Cranmer, his early education, sent to Cambridge, an elected of Jesus College, his first marriage, the story that he was an ostler at Dolphin, appointed reader at Buckingham College, becomes a widower, is restored to his fellowship. A lot of this is just kind of reworking old ground. Proceeds to the Doctor of Divinity, is appointed a divine a divinity lecturer in his to his college and public examiner in theology. Becomes tutor to the Cressies, is nominated a delegate on the matrimonial cause, but is unable to attend. Avocation of the cause to Rome, Cranmer's opinion respecting the divorce. His introduction to the king is commanded to put his opinion in writing. Is sent with embassy to Rome, opinion of, of the universities with changing of money. Memorial to the Pope, Cranmer offers to maintain his opinion by disputation at Rome, returns to England. His account of Pole's book on the divorce, his second mission to the continent, his marriage with the niece of Osiander, um, and I'm not sure if McCulloch is really going much further than these old writers. We're going to want to raise that question as we go. Fifteen thirty-two, fifteen thirty-three. We call fifteen thirty-three the lightning round. A lot goes really fast in that year. The king resolves to raise Cranmer, Cranmer to the primacy. <clears throat> Cranmer's reluctance to accept it. The question we have, could he have declined it? Given what we know about Cranmer, he had a real sense of loyalty to the crown. So uh, kind of uh, almost a military. But when, a, when a senior officer expresses a wish, we would say in the military, that's taken as a command. So did Cranmer reluctantly uh, accept it, but recognized that it was the king's wish, hence a command that he had to obey. I don't know. He consents to take it with a protest against submission to the Pope. He's consecrated 30 March 1533, makes his protestation publicly. His conduct in this respect, the king secretly marries Anne Boleyn, the marriage not performed by Cranmer. Cranmer pronounces the nullity of the king's marriage with Craig Catherine, marriage of Anne Boleyn, repeated in public. Cranmer's notice of Frith's martyrdom, I'm going to want to see that. The king's determination to appeal to a general council. The papal sentence pronouncing the marriage with Anne void. The abortive attempt of the French king to effect a reconciliation between Henry and the Pope. Chapter 4, 1533 to 1535, difficulties of Cranmer's situation, spirit of dissension among the clergy, the nun of Kent, Cranmer's account of her, birth of the Princess Elizabeth, well, he's got that wrong, that's 15, or 1533, that's correct, September 1533, various statutes against the Pope. Acquiescence of the clergy, assent of the convocation, and subscription of the chapters and universities, Bishop Fisher and Sir Thomas More, Cranmer's interference in their behalf, ecclesiastical supremacy conferred upon the king, the clergy ordered to publish and inculcate the king's supremacy, Cranmer's letter to the king respecting it, expectations of the General Council, Cranmer's discussions of this subject, the King's Primer. Chapter 5, 1535 to 36, Cranmer's provincial visitation opposed by Gardiner and by Stokesley, Bishop of London. Stokesley refuses to assist in revising the translation of the Bible. Cranmer's care for the marches of Calais, Calais, I think it's Calais, 
C-A-L-A-I-S. Negotiations with the Protestant Princes of Germany, Bull of Pius, or Pius, it's P-I-O-U-S here, but it normally spelled P-I-U-S, number three against Henry. Official publication of it delayed, the bull injurious to the papacy, changes in the Episcopal bench, Cromwell made vice regent, dissolution of the monasteries, sentiments of Cranmer respecting it, fall of Anne Boleyn, Cranmer's letter to the king in her behalf, her marriage annulled, the king marries Jane Seymour the day after Anne Boleyn's execution. Chapter 6, 1536 and 37, New Acts for the Succession, Act for Renouncing the Power of the Pope, Meeting of Convocation, Debates there, the Address of Alexander Alice, Alas, that's going to be interesting, Articles Agreed Upon, which are unsatisfactory both to Papists and Protestants, Interesting language in 1833. Not surprising, however. Protestation of the king against the council. Then summoned the bishop's book. Cranmer's interview with an ignorant priest who'd reviled him. All this stuff gets retold by, by Dermot. Reluctant obedience to the injunctions. Cranmer's letter to Cromwell on the subject, Matthew's Bible, Cranmer's joy at its publication. 1538, suppression of the greater monasteries. Diocese of Hereford visited by Cranmer. Registers of baptisms, etc. introduced. Eagerness of the people to peruse the Bible. Honors of Thomas of Becket abolished. The bull of excommunication issued. The dominions of Henry offered by the Pope to the King of Scotland. Declaration of the bishops against the Pope. Address of Cranmer to the King for further reformation. He pleads for the marriage of the clergy. Approaching ascendancy of the Romish party. Proclamation against the married clergy. Arrival of ambassadors from Germany. Cranmer endeavors to procure them a conference with the English divines. His efforts defeated, disappointment of the Germans, intrigues of Gardner, etc. Proceedings against Lambert. Cranmer still a believer in the popish doctrine of the sacrament. Lambert is brought before Cranmer and appeals to the king. His trial, mo moderation of Cranmer in disputing with Lambert. Condemnation and execute of Lambert, burning of two Anabaptists, intrigues of Pole, increasing influence of the Romanists. Chapter 8, 1539 to 1541. Firmness of Cranmer in resisting the misapplication of church property. His views respecting prebendal preferments. Character of Cranmer's auxiliaries, Cromwell. Latimer, Shaxton, Fox, Bonner raised to the bench, New Parliament, Royal Message, recommending six articles for examination, Cranmer's opposition, the King present at one stage in the debates, Cranmer refuses to retire from the debate, though desired by the King, Act of Six Articles, Latimer and Shaxton resign their bishoprics. Cranmer's notion respecting the secular power in ecclesiastical matters. Distress of Cranmer. He sends his wife to Germany. The peers entertained by Cranmer at Lambeth. The king's gracious message to him. Popish book of ceremonies. Not sanctioned by the convocation. Exasperation of the Germans at the Six Articles, Indignation of Luther, Project of the Marriage with Anne Cleves, the King's Antipathy to Her, Convocation Occurs in the Dissolution of the Marriage, Cranmer presides at this business, his views respecting it, his intercession for Cromwell, 
he's left almost alone. His firmness in opposing the intended popish for formulary is fall anticipated. Noble fidelity of the king to Cranmer. Proclamation to the Church of Canterbury restored to the state of a deanery and chapter. Cranmer's benevolent views respecting Canterbury Grammar School. Information brought to Cranmer the unfaithfulness of the Queen Catherine Howard, communicated by him to the King. Interview of, with, of Cranmer with the Queen, her execution. Chapter 9, 1542 to 1546. Attempts of the Papists for a revision of the English Bible. Portions of the Bible appointed to be read by the minister in the church. Reformation in Scotland. Certain questions proposed to the English divines by the king. Cranmer's answer to them. The king's book. Cranmer's visitation of his diocese. The king marries Catherine Parr. A board of conspiracy, abortive conspiracy for the ruin of Cranmer. Act for mitigating the six articles. Goswick's attack and Cranmer. Alteration of Cranmer's armorial device. English litany. Cranmer's attempts at more effectual reformation. Defeated. Another fruitless plot against Prop Cranmer. Cranmer falsely accused of mean housekeeping by Seymour. Orders for the removal of images which had been used surreptitiously. English prayers partially allowed. And ask you. Cranmer's not concerned in her persecution. Death of Henry VIII, reflections on his character and government. Chapter 10, 1547-1548. And I think we'll just call it there for now. A phone call coming in that I'm waiting on. Verse 5 of hymn number 9. Come, let thy voice be one with theirs. Shout with their shout of praise. See how the giant sun soars up, great Lord of years and days. So let the love of Jesus come and set thy soul ablaze. Until next time, Godspeed.